Harry's Wife, A Less Than Raw Narcissist, Part 65.2. So, not with content with ripping off your ideas, merching them, and then making you pay if it all goes tits up. The almost insatiable quest for fuel, and, of course, the near incessant need for the assertion of control, means that we have to experience yet more being pumped out through the PR machine. Each and every day, a new article arrives expressing the apparent virtues and loveliness of Harry's wife. And here we have Hello, which once again pops up in its marshmallow, cushion-faced manner with an article by Fiona Ward which tells us Zara Tyndall channelled Harry's wife for latest appearance, and she's not alone. My scrupulously clean backside, she did not. Zara Tyndall wouldn't give a flying fuck about looking like Harry's wife and channeling her appearance. Not at all. She goes her own way. Zara, plucky, spunky young thing, that bit of a rebel, and her and good old Mike Tyndall, uh, not bothering about titles, just getting on with it on a day-to-day -day basis. But no. Hello, charged with its need to pump out these articles as part of the ongoing assertion of control of Harry's wife, provides us with this article. Zara Tyndall looked gorgeous as ever as she arrived at Wimbledon with husband Mike Tyndall on Wednesday this week, and we couldn't help but notice that her outfit was a little similar to her stylish cousin-in-law, the Duchess of Sussex. Arse lickety split. The royal chose Ralph Lauren stripes for her trip to the tennis, alongside a host of other famous faces. And of course, Harry's wife also, a chic striped outfit from the designer for her first royal appearance at Wimbledon back in 2018. In fact, Harry's wife's classic stripes might have even inspired other style stars too, since Sienna Miller also appeared at the tournament this year wearing a gorgeous striped cohort from Ralph Lauren. Sienna Miller used to be called Grubby Tits because in the early days of her fame she posted a topless picture of herself what looked like coming from the kitchen of a council property, social housing, and thus in her grasping way of trying to get fame she was showing off the old boobies in order to get herself noticed. Well, it certainly worked. I can safely say that neither Zara Tyndall nor Sienna Miller would be channeling anything at all to do with Harry's wife. And indeed, Hello shows the mindless frippery for which it is well known by providing us with a picture of Mike and Zara Tyndall. And she is indeed wearing stripes. And they are navy and possibly cream or an ivory colour. Then let's have a look at the stripes that Harry's wife was wearing. Oh, look! They are a royal blue and white. They are thicker in nature. The white stripe looks to be larger than the blue stripe, whereas with Zara Tyndall's outfit, it's the other way around, and some of her white stripes are medium-sized and some are thin. So the tops look nothing like one another. And this just shows the absurdity of this kind of PR shite that is pumped out. Neither outfits look similar. I don't know if we get a shot of Sienna Miller. Oh, we do. Here's Sienna Miller. She looks like she's got a pair of pyjamas on, actually, or that she's doing an advertisement for Andy Pandy. Now, hers are of a similar colour to Harry's wife, that must be said, but she has got... Harry's wife was just wearing a blouse, whereas Sienna Miller has basically striped pyjamas or striped overalls on. The time difference between all of this means they won't have been given a fig about what Harry's wife had been wearing. And that certainly their personalities mean that they wouldn't either. And therefore, neither of them were channeling this. But of course, Harry's wife's organ, namely, hello, has to make it look like that's the case. Why? In order to try and keep Harry's wife in the news. Why? In order to assert control. And again, what happens is a shameless plug, of course. The article tells us the chic cotton shirt that Harry's wife made famous, I'm sure she didn't, is currently available to buy again. Ah, costing £125 on the American Label's website. Zara finished her look with a pair of navy wedge espadrilles, which are also very similar to the Castana style. Harry's wife loves. Bloody hell, 
woman wearing espadrilles shocker as other woman wears espadrilles. Do you know something? I was playing tennis the other day and I was wearing a pair of trainers and so was my opponent. Fuck me, get it in hello. HG and HG's opponent, whose ass I kicked, by the way, both wearing trainers. It's a shocker. It should be news. I think he was actually channeling me in terms of my trainer wearing. The Duchess of Cambridge's sister, Pippa Middleton, is also fond of Ralph Lauren's pieces for Wimbledon and wore a blue and white shirt dress from the designer for the 2018 tournament too. She was recently pictured wearing the very same dress while out on a bike ride around London, so the shirt dress has clearly stood the test of time. Well, she might have bought another one. Sweetly, Princess Charlotte has also been pictured wearing a Ralph Lauren dress it really is Ralph Lauren and Harry's wife day, isn't it, at Hello, in the past, also in a blue and white colour way. And one of Kate's own favourite Breton tops is from none other than the very same brand too. Who'd have thought it? Who'd have thought that all of these famous people are all shopping at Ralph Lauren? I mean, nobody's ever heard of Ralph Lauren before, have they? It's one of those obscure brands. Perhaps Ralph Lauren is the designer of choice for Royal Stripes, asked the articles. We spotted some similar items on the high street below, if you fancy stealing their style. So, a plug for Monsoon, a plug for Shine, a plug for Ron John Lewis. Ron Lewis? Who's that? John Lewis. And all predicated on basically saying that Zara Tyndall channelled Harry's wife for the latest appearance. No, she didn't. And this article is a completely transparent, to those of us who are in the know, of course, listeners, of... PR, both in terms of the assertion of control through favourable repertage, facade management, and of course the opportunity to plug various items and drawing a similarity between people that isn't actually there. Remember, many of you would look at that and think, I wouldn't want to be associated with something so shamelessly sacharine, but actually, that doesn't matter when it comes to Harry's wife because the brief is keep me in the news, keep me relevant, make me look good. All a part of maintaining that very important facade and, of course, the assertion of control. The necessity of the maintenance of the PR and the assertion of control results in another piece of frippery, this time courtesy of Sky News, which tells us Population Matters charity give Harry and his wife a award for limiting family to two children. The couple will receive £500 to donate to charity for making the enlightened decision to only have two children. So, why aren't you filling in your forms, submitting them en masse, of all of you who've decided that you're only going to limit yourself to two children? What about those of you who've only got one child? Do you get a thousand pounds? Seven hundred and fifty pounds? You can donate it to charity. Donate it to the Angel Assistance Fund. Help out your fellow victims. Get enable them to get some access to some meaty HG Tudor material, which will make their lives immeasurably better. Of course, this fact that they have received such an award—it's nothing special. You've decided to not have any more children. Big deal. Whoopie fucking do. So do many other people. But of course, it's an opportunity for the charity to gain some publicity by causing them to make the award. The article tells us the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have been given a special award for deciding to limit their family to two children. Prince Harry, 36, told British Vogue in 2019 he and his wife, 39, <clears throat> were only planning to maximum to reduce their impact on the environment. Right again facade management. Their son Archie was born on 6th of May that year, followed by Lilibet Lily Diana on 4th of June 2021. The charity, Population Matters, said they were giving the couple the award after making the enlightened decision to have a smaller family and acting as role models for others. I can safely say that there would be nobody looking at it and going, do you know what? Let's limit pumping out two children because of Harry and his wife. What an excellent role models they are. It hadn't occurred to me for economic reasons and just sheer drain on my time and energy to keep it to two children. No, that had never crossed my mind. The fact that I've taken a bag and I've put fun 
and money and sex and free time and sleep in it and ch chucked it out of the fucking window, that's nothing to do with the fact of having children. Oh no. I made this decision solely based on the fact of the role model that is Harry's wife and Harry. What utter horseshit. This, of course, is an opportunity for the charity to get leverage off the gruesome twosome. Understandable. But then the fact that it makes it into the press, something that's utterly trivial, and actually demonstrates it to be laughable. Because why isn't everybody else getting an award? Population matters. Why aren't you writing to everyone? Population matters. Why aren't you giving away money by absolute truckload to those in China when they restricted it to one child only? I think it's been increased to two now. Why are you not sending a loads of money over that way? Saying, well done, everybody. You're keeping it down to two children. Bravo. Have some spondulics. No, they're not. They, of course, are utilising it as opportunism, piggybacking these two, who, of course, then want to be able to show, look, look how sustainable we are. Look how authentic we are. Look how organic we are by limiting the children to two so that we don't have an impact upon the environment. Although we have got 27,000 toilets, which when they're flushed, creates a tsunami of water that drains nearby lagoons and reservoirs, leading to environmental damage and the fact that nobody's able to drink water for two days until it rains again. No. This is the sustainability of somebody that jets back and forth across the Atlantic. This is the sustainability of somebody that flies to New York for a baby shower and has everybody else flying into a tent the same. This is the sustainability of having an £11 million mansion. Why don't you go and live in a caravan with a solar panel and a chemical toilet? That might be a little more sustainable, but no. And once again, you're treated to the grandiosity, listeners, the hypocrisy the necessity of appearing in the public eye through the assertion of control, and it's more of the same. The article continues, Having a smaller family reduces our impact on the earth, not if they live in a fucking huge house they don't and jet set everywhere, and provides a better chance for all our children, their children, and future generations to flourish on a healthy planet, the charity said in the statement. We commend the Duke and Duchess for taking this enlightened decision and for affirming that a smaller family is also a happy family. So all of those that have got three children, you're not, that's not a happy family. It's the way it is. Fuck you. What's that? You've got four children. You must be downright miserable. And as for you over there with nine, that must be hell on earth. I mean, you must be second in line to be Elzebub with that set up, mustn't you? So three children, two boys and a girl, mm -mm. that can't be a happy family. You're going to have to kill a parent so you get down to four and then you'll be happy again. Just off dad, shove him off a cliff. The children won't mind, they won't mourn the loss of uh, papa. No, not at all, they won't miss the main breadwinner or their male role model. It's okay, mum will manage on her own. Now there's four of you, it's happy family. It's automatic, didn't you know? A smaller family is also a happy family. In fact, kids, why not go the whole hog? Exterminate mum and dad, then there's only the three of you. Doesn't matter that there's no income and your house will soon be repossessed. Doesn't matter that you're not going to be able to put food on the table. Balls to all of that. Small family, a happy family. What utter tribe. And of course, all of this finds its way through the PR machine and ends up in Sky News and probably elsewhere if I could bother myself to go and look, which, funnily enough, I can't. Hypocrisy, grandiosity, necessity of assertion of control through PR. Yet more of the same. But we're not done yet. Join me in part 65.3 for more analysis of Harry's wife.